Hey there everyone and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another orchid adventure with who else but me, Maria Young. So in today's episode I'm going to talk to you guys all about my new fertilization method with my orchids that I am growing outdoors in my garden. I'm also going to talk to you especially about why I believe it is so important that now I begin to fertilize my orchids the way that I'm going to do so because as you guys know it is so important that we do all that we can to maintain our orchids so healthy and blooming on a regular basis. Indeed, we want them to reach their fullest and greatest potential and that is why I elected to do it this way. But before I begin to talk about that, folks, I want to share with you something so very special, something so very important and that is about recognizing my good old orchid folks that are out there right now. My orchid peeps that have decided to join me on my orchid adventures indeed I want you guys to know that I do appreciate each and every one of you guys for your love your support and for you continuing to join me and watch my videos on a regular basis indeed I do love you all and because I do I want to show you exactly how special you are to me by recognizing some of you so with that being said I want to give my first shout out to my, to my tropical, tropical backyard. backyard. Green, Green Crash, crash. Test, Test, Irma, Irma Navarro, Navarro, Frank, Frank Drebin, also Audrey, Audrey Horn, Horn Mung Erin, Will, Will D, 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 Mila, Mila Gossett, Gossett, David, David Henderson, Henderson, Apricot, Apricot Hearts, Hearts Christopher, Christopher E. e. Panita, and, and me, me myself, myself, and Orchid, Orchid D. D. Indeed, I love you guys all. You guys don't even know. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Mwah, 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 and Okay, folks, now I know you guys are wondering what in the world type of new method is she going to be using to fertilize her orchids? Well, I am about to tell you. I am going to be using the tea bag method. I know you guys are wondering, you're like, oh my gosh, she has totally fell off her rockers, totally lost her mind, like it's totally gone, so she's talking about using tea bags to fertilize her orchids. I rest assure you. Guys, I still have my rationality. I am not going to be using tea bags to fertilize my orchids, but instead I am going to use tea bags to contain my fertilizer, which is going to act as a tea bag, and which is going to contain the fertilizer, but it's also going to allow the nutrients to filter through and indeed fertilize the roots of our orchids. So yes, we're going to be making actually fertilizer tea bags. And the reason why that I feel it is so important for me to do this is because I have so many different responsibilities you guys know I have an outdoor growth space which is my garden but I also have an indoor growth space as well so I have twice the amount of work in doing everything that I need to from of course it using insecticides or different sprays and different things to rid my orchids of insects and critters that we do not want and also I have to spray fungicides to contain the fungus outside of my garden so that it won't infect my garden as well and and also I have to water and fertilize at the same time so so many different things how are we gonna find the time to do it so understanding the type of orchid grower that I am sometimes I lack in certain responsibilities and I don't want to do that anymore because I've seen the downfall of when we neglect some of the responsibilities and for a while it can be doing okay but all of a sudden it's like a brick wall just comes tumbling down and sometimes it hits you all at one time and I had that experience last year so so indeed I understand the importance of every department, every segment of all of the responsibilities that we have. So because of this, I want to ensure that I'm capable of doing that and of course having enough time for myself to actually live a life because I do have a full-time job and I have my extracurricular activities and businesses that I also do on the side so yes 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 I have to maintain my sanity and still enjoy my orchids and my life so for me it's gonna be quite a blessing for me to do this I'm gonna show you exactly how I am making these fertilizer tea bags or fertilizer bags let's just call it that and of course if 
it is too tedious and it can be quite time consuming to make these bags. I'm going to also show you an alternative to doing it. So yeah, there is an easier way and I'm going to show you that as well. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's get the orchid fertilizing party started. Come on. And the materials that we're going to be using today is this screen material. This is actually what you will find in your windows to prevent flies and other insects from coming inside of your window. So this is the screen. Now of course this is made of metallic or metal wires but indeed it is so thin that you can cut it with a pair of scissors and quite easily on top of that. So that's what we're going to be using to make the bags. Of course, you're going to need the scissors, and I have little kitty scissors. Oh my gosh, little kindergarten scissors bring back memories. But indeed, this will work too. I couldn't find my bigger scissors, so scissors. Just a pair of scissors, okay, folks? And this right here is gauge wire. Now, what I'm using is 26 gauge. It is thin enough, and you can maneuver it, and it's really easy to be flexible and to bend as well. So it's good for this project. Although, I will say, if you want to go up a little bit on the gauge, because 20 26 uh, gauge is actually really really thin and it was a little bit more tedious for me to uh, actually maneuver this into the screen material so yeah if you want to up it then go ahead but if you want to use this as well this is good this will work now of course this is the most important ingredient now this is actually osmocote this is the slow release fertilizer and you can use whatever orchid fertilizer or fertilizer that you want to use with your orchids just as long as you already know that it works well well and it's not going to harm your orchid. Osmocote is something that a lot of growers already use in their orchids and that's what I opted to go with as well. Again, I stated this is slow release up to six months on this. Okay, so here we are with the screen material and I'm taking a look at it and I'm going to go ahead and size it up to a good measurement for the tea bags. And as you can see, I folded it in half because all I want to worry about is closing in these two sides. We're not going to have to actually close in the bottom because, again, it's folded in half. So that's some less work that we'll have to do. I'm going to go ahead and cut it so that we can go ahead and have the tea bags cut down to size. And now we have to cut out the individual tea bags itself. So let's go ahead and do that. There you go, that's a good size. Here's another one. Here's another one. Okay, so there you go. These are what are going to be our tea bags. So now what we have to do is we have to take the gauge, which is this right here, and we're gonna go ahead and take the tea bag, or the fertilizer bag, and I'm just gonna go over a little bit at the top over a little bit at the bottom just to ensure that we have enough so I'm going to do that for the other side as well a little bit at the top a little bit at the bottom voila that easy folks and now all it is is a matter of actually weaving this wire into this mesh material and we're going to do it and we're going to act almost as if we would sew clothing or material but instead without a needle. So what we're doing is actually just weaving back and forth in and out. Now, of course I did tell you that this is really really thin wire so it's a little bit trickier can cause a little bit of more time that you have to take. Oops. But once you get the hang of it, it's not that difficult, folks. Just a little bit of patience goes a long, long way. So I'm just weaving back and forth, in and out. And soon, once we're all the way at the top, then uh, we'll be ready to start the other side. And once you get to the top and you're finished, all you're going to do with that top portion right there is you're just going to bend it over, maybe even put it through one more hole in the screen. But of course, if you bend it in there, bend it over, that's going to lock it in place. So indeed, let's go ahead and continue, and then we're going to do the other side, and then I'm going to show you the finished portion. And 
voila folks we are all done this is the final finished product right here the pouch or the tea bag as you can see it's totally closed at the sides by that wire that we put through there and indeed it is fully functional it will contain our fertilizer of which we selected right here the slow release osmocote and this is up to six months six months folks can you imagine that six months of not having to fertilize your orchids? Like, oh my gosh, how convenient is that? Very convenient. So yes, indeed, very functional. Now it says to do only about a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of fertilizer. So indeed, that looks just about right. And after we've gotten the amount of fertilizer that we want in there, we're gonna use the gauge or the wire again. And we're just gonna put it right through there. Now you can elect to weave up the top if you wanted to do that as well. Totally your choice, but I don't think it's going anywhere. You can actually close it back up here and you're not gonna have to worry about that fertilizer actually going anywhere. It is safe and secure in our fertilizer tea bag. So let's go ahead and hang this up and see exactly what it looks like. Oh yeah, I did tell you guys that I was gonna show you an easier way of doing this just in case you did not wanna go through the hoopla of actually having to make these bags. Because even though you can save some money by making it yourself, doing it yourself, DIY, but of course it does take some time and you need some patience and yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating. So if you don't wanna go through the hoopla, then don't. You can actually make this out of easier material, such as your tool material. You often see that at weddings and party favors and things of that nature. You can use that material, make it like a sachet, and actually just put it inside of the center, close it up, and tie it up, and then tie it, of course, onto your orchid. That simple, guys. But there is even yet an easier method. This right here I found at the dollar store for one buckaroonie, and this is actually used for party favors as well it comes in eight in a bag look at that look at that and of course they're already made up bags you don't have to do anything at all all you have to do is fill this up with that fertilizer again a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon and look at there then you would close it up just like that voila and there you have it fertilizer a party in a bag so indeed that is quite an easier method and looking throughout my orchid tree you will find these magnificent tea bags all over the place and indeed I am quite happy because now that these fertilizer bags are here the slow release fertilizer will actually last up to six months so can you imagine six months of not having to worry about fertilizing my orchids yes indeed I am quite happy and now I can focus on my other responsibilities of of keeping my orchids so beautiful and healthy. And I know many of you guys may be wondering exactly how well can these tiny fertilizer bags actually fertilize our orchids. After all, they are so small and they can't quite possibly saturate the entire root system of an orchid, especially our vandas, right? Well, guess what? Out in nature, believe it or not, the orchid actually gets fertilized much in the same way because majority of times the orchid will receive its fertilizer from animal droppings. That's right, little amounts of animal feces that happen to fall on the roots. And as you know, they will actually fall only on certain locations of the roots, not the entire root system itself. So lucky for us, our orchids do have quite a wicking system where it'll actually take that fertilizer wherever it may drop and it will wick into the entire plant itself. So indeed, these tea bags are quite sufficient and they will fertilize your orchids quite well.
And there you have it, folks. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another orchid adventure with me, Maria Young. And of course, if you like this video, which I hope you did, please be sure to give it a green thumbs up. And if you want to stay tuned to my latest and greatest adventures, please be sure to subscribe. And also, I want to invite you guys to join me on my Facebook adventures as well, because I do have such a great time with all of my orchid friends right on my orchid adventures adventure on Facebook and from time to time you can also catch me on a live broadcast engaging with you of course live so again I thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode and you guys already know right of course you guys do that I love you all and of course And there you have it. Ooh, I almost fell. <laughs> because the majority of our orchids will receive their fertilizer from orchid droppings. Really, orchid droppings? I didn't know that orchids had droppings. Like, oh my gosh. My new method of fertilizing my orchids that are right outdoors in my orchid garden. Now, you guys know, especially when there are loud motorcycles. Zah! Okay, sorry about that. Hey everyone, and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another, are you serious, another motorcycle? Are you kidding me? Are you totally kidding me? Oh, that wasn't a motorcycle. That was just a large bunny car that wants to make a lot of noise. Like, also to orchid heck with you. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Shall we? I love you so, 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 so much. And...